What do you mean he's going to tell me how to breathe? I don't know already how to do that. I'm doing it right now. Watch. <sighs> Come on. What? Hello and welcome to Music Basics with Ballard, Episode 1, Breathing for Performance. Uh, before we get into that, I'm going to do a little bit of an intro. Uh, these are going to be a series of classes uh, online here on YouTube for you to be able to learn some basics about music. Uh, it's going to cover all kinds of things. It's going to cover theory, ear training, music in our world, uh, basic technology, and performance basics like the topic today. Today's topic, again, is breathing for performance. Um, just a little side note, um, I am a music teacher by trade and um, I am doing these classes as part of something for uh, the uh, current uh, situation we have going on for the COVID-19 crisis. Um, this is uh, emergency distance learning and um, I'm kind of making a thing out of it. But while this is going on, um, whenever I make one of these videos, I'm going to uh, sneak code phrases and code words into the video. Uh, these are for my students as an attendance thing to prove that they watch the video all the way through. Um, these are just for them. Uh, and what they need to do is uh, within 24 hours, they have to put the code word or phrase into Google Classroom. Uh, they know where all that information is. They have all that. But uh, this is just for everyone else who's watching this. Those code phrases, when they slip in there, that's all they're for. Um, the first part of our code phrase for today is fruit. Yep, like the thing you eat, fruit. So that's our first code word. Now, today's topic is breathing for performance. Now, I'm going to tell you flat out, this is an adaptation of the amazing work from Patrick Sheridan and the late Sam Palafian from The Breathing Gym. I will put a link in the description down below uh, how to get the actual uh, the DVDs and the, uh, the workbooks absolutely one of the most fabulous uh, pieces of literature out there on performance breathing. And uh, I highly recommend uh, following that entire course. This is like a really pared down version to kind of get us started with these Music Basics with Ballard classes. And we're going to see uh, how we do with that. Again, uh, Sam Palafian, the late great Sam Palafian, miss him dearly, um, and Patrick Sheridan, who's awesome, and I get to see him every year when I go to the Midwest International Clinic. A um, little shot of that right now. Hey guys, I'm here in uh, Chicago, and I told you I'm going to run into people that are awesome. I want you to meet somebody, and uh, this, is, this is Patrick Sheridan. What's up? Oh, it's great to know that you guys are doing the breathing gym on a regular basis. That's super awesome. It's the best steps towards making great tone and playing in tune. So I'm so excited that your director, Mr. Ballard, is bringing it to you and that you guys are rocking it out. So keep it up. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to have all of you all uh, joining along in this. Now, what is breathing for performance? Well, it's hugely, hugely different from breathing for everyday survival. We all have to breathe. We are living, breathing creatures. We all have to do it. We respire and our it's so important to our survival that we don't even think about it. We can control it when we want to, more on that in a moment, but we are using it every day, every second of our lives. We breathe in, our lungs take in the oxygen and separate it out into uh, from the other uh, other gases that we breathe in and puts the oxygen into our system. Our system uses that oxygen, creates byproducts such as carbon, monox carbon dioxide, not monoxide, that's deadly, carbon dioxide and water, and it'll pour itself out of your uh, your system back as you as you exhale and uh, you just keep doing that over and over again. So why do I need to talk about breathing for performance? You already know how to do it. Not many people know how to do it for performance. They know how to do it to breathe and to live, but then you can't just use that and perform with it. It just it's not strong enough. It doesn't have enough of the uh, support behind it because it's just there for you to survive. Y your brain doesn't think, well, I need to 
breathe out at this speed and take and take this breath in really, really quickly because I don't have much time between this spot and this spot. It doesn't do that unless you're running or you're doing activity. That's when your brain starts changing the way you breathe. When you're performing, you have to think about it the whole way through. And it starts surprisingly with posture. So why does posture matter? Well, when you're breathing to perform, you want to make sure you want to make sure that you are breathing in such you're, you're, you're breathing in such a way that nothing is obstructed. The first thing you need to think about is your posture. And you need to align all your bones. I, I, I really hate it when you tell somebody to sit up straight. People always use that phrase, sit up straight. It is such a bad way to describe it because when you tell people to sit up straight, what do they usually do? They go, and they puff themselves up and they, they, they get all tense. That, that's, that's bad, 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 bad. So I like to use the phrase, sit balanced. Um, I picked that phrase up from a number of teachers that I've had and then um, uh, bringing them back again, uh, Sam and Pat both mentioned it when they were doing the talking about breathing gym when I was taking a class with them. So I use the phrase sit balanced. And we like to and I like to make sure we talk about how you the all the bones in your body need to align the way that they're supposed to. Your back isn't vertical and straight. Your back has a curve, a natural like S curve to it. I mean, look at signs for chiropractors. Signs for chiropractors have a picture of the human spine on it. It is not shaped like this. It is more like that. It's got a little bit of a curve to it. And you want to find that spot that it feels when you're sitting balanced, you're going to feel like all of your muscles are just kind of there. They're not holding anything in place. You're not, if you're, because if you lean to the left, you'll feel muscles over here tighten up. And if you lean to the right, if you lean forward, you feel like muscles back here tighten up. You know, you just got to keep that posture. And a great way to do it, and I'm going to move my chair back a little bit here is you need to make sure you're thinking from the top of your head all the way through all the bones. Now, right now I'm sitting, and when you're sitting, and I'll show you standing in a moment, when you're sitting, you want to think all the way down to your hip socket. Now, your hip socket is much farther into your body than you think. A lot of people, like when you ask them where their hips are, they point out here. Your actual hip socket is way farther in because your femur bone comes all the way up to your hips and it connects way back here in the center. It doesn't connect out here on the sides. It connects here on the center. So you want to make sure that you are all the way down to the hip bone from the top of your head. So you want to I always like to roll my head around a little bit, make sure it's sitting on that little bone. And by the way, that, your head kind of sits on a little bone like this. It kind of goes into your little bone and, and it rests like that. So you want to make sure your head's resting on top of the, your spine. And then you want to roll your shoulders a little bit just to make sure. And then you want to make sure everything's kind of balanced. And the way I kind of do that is I will often rest my arms in my legs and then put myself into balance by kind of resting over top of my bones until I feel like I'm not using any muscles to keep myself vertical. And you'll often find me sitting in a very balanced kind of posture. Um, and I'm going to turn to the side a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. So um, I wore this jacket on specifics because it has this gray stripe down the side. So the, uh, as you're kind of sitting, if you're sitting nice and balanced, you'll notice that you're kind of over top of all your bones. Now, the other thing you notice is that I scooted forward on the stool a little bit to get my legs to drop down so my knees are at a lower plane than my hips. So my hip socket's up here, and I'm pointing to where my hip socket is, not where, like, in my body where it is. My hip socket's about here, and my knees are lower than that. And you want that because that opens up this space here because you don't want to be breathing in this space here. You want to be breathing in this space right here. It's a lot easier when you're standing, and uh, I'll show you standing right now. So like sitting, you need to make sure you're balanced all the way from the top of your head all the way down to your ankles. Now this is something that a lot of times you'll see in places like the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Washington, D.C. Uh, those guys know how to stand for long periods of time because that's their job. And a lot of the times you take a look at that way the military do it, that's the way that they kind of do it. So you want to make sure you're balanced from the top of your head all the way through your shoulders, down through your spine, making sure your spine has a nice feel you're not using any muscles and you want to, the spot they really can tell if you're standing balanced is you want to make sure your, your feet are shoulder width apart, whatever's comfortable for you. And then the, you should not feel these muscles and your glutes 
and you, uh, uh, you should not feel any of these muscles, your, your thigh muscles your, or your rear end, should not feel them tightening up on you when you're standing nice and balanced. I always kind of check it by rolling myself around and then just kind of balancing myself over top of it. And back to, when you're back at sitting, however, you need to make sure that you're keeping those knees below your hips and you're sitting all kinds of balanced. So definitely, uh, we're gonna do this from a sitting position because this is kind of how my studio is set up uh, to do these recordings, so I'm gonna do the best I can. So we're gonna do this from sitting. So make sure you're sitting nice and balanced. Get your knees on a lower plane from your hips, so they need to be lower than your hips, and you need to be sitting there. And I'm gonna be, I'm sitting on the edge of my chair here, and I, I assure you, even though you can't see my knees, that they are below my hips. The yeah. next important part is tensionless breathing, and we do that through the shape. The word that we like to use when describing the shape of your throat and your mouth is the word whoa. So why don't you, I want you to say that with me real quick. Just, uh, I know you're gonna be talking to your computer screen and everyone's gonna look at you funny. It's okay, everyone looks at me funny anyway. So what you're gonna do is you're going to make this shape. You're gonna go whoa. So you're gonna say that, say that at your computer screen with me right now, say that, ready? Whoa, and you really want that to sound really low and down into your, and down and big and deep, because you want that big whoa shape. A lot of times people equate it to like, you know, old 80s surfer movies where the surfer would be like, whoa, hang loose. You know, like you want to think, whoa, big open whoa shape. Now I've got a really bassy voice, it really makes me, it makes that stand out, but whoa, think that. One more time, say whoa with me. Whoa, all right, now you have that shape. Now, if you think about that shape, I want you to take a breath in and you wanna make sure that nothing in here is tense. You don't wanna hear this. <gasps> or <sighs> you don't wanna hear any of that. You wanna hear this. Just the air moving through that whoa space. Try it again, try it with me. Try that, try getting that whoa shape, think whoa. And now take a big breath in and a big breath out and just think whoa. We like to call that a sigh breath. Take a sigh breath with me and make it drop even lower. Make that sound, the pitch even lower. Ready? Sigh breath with me again. Drop the pitch. Yeah, really get that wide and open. Strengthening. Now, strengthening exercises are extremely important to breathing. The reason why we do strengthening exercises is to build up the diaphragm muscle. The diaphragm muscle is this muscle that's underneath your lungs. And for those of you who don't know, your lungs are incapable of moving themselves. They are not a muscle, they are an organ. They require a muscle to move, just like your arm. It doesn't just go, you can't just go, hey bone, bend. You have to have a muscle that's here that pulls on the arm and pulls it up. Same thing happens in your body to breathe. Your lungs get pulled on by your diaphragm muscle. They don't, it doesn't like expand them. A lot of people you think, they think you breathe up here. You actually don't breathe up here. You breathe by the muscle pulling down on your lungs. And we want to strengthen that diaphragm muscle by, and also making that, and now you're understanding why that Posture with that lower, with your, with your leg, your knees below your hips, and making sure this is all open is so important for performance breathing. You want to make sure that your knees are down there. You have all that space to move the lungs into as the diaphragm pulls down on your lungs and fill, to help them fill up and then pushes back up to empty them out. Okay? So that muscle, that, uh, sorry, that pulls down and then releases and your lungs return to their shape. The lungs go back to their, they're very elastic and they return back to their shape. There's no pushing back. You can push back, um, but the natural thing is for it to just kind of release and the lungs return to their normal shape as they empty out, as they expand and then collapse back down. Okay, so you're just gonna take that nice big deep breath in and we're gonna think that that woe shape. And before we do the strengthening exercise, I want you to try one more sigh with me and really think about pushing that air down into your into your stomach area instead of trying to don't fill up here because that puts tension on it you hear it right away <sighs> that was me breathing up here instead of breathing down here which <sighs> all right take that side breath with me ready one more really fill up maximize your air fill up your air ready Oh yeah, much, much better, much, much better. All right, 
So that leads me to this whole thing about strengthening. Now, you're going to strengthen two things in strengthening exercises. You're going to strengthen your capacity, and you're going to strengthen the muscle that you are working with. So you're working here with the muscle inside your body, and you're going to try to make the muscle inside your body just kind of be as strong as possible. Okay? So here we go. We're going to take that muscle inside your body, and we're going to try to make it as strong as possible. And the way we do that is through big strengthening exercises. So the first thing we're going to do is called in sip sip. Now this is again adapted straight out of the breathing gym. Uh, again, the links in the in the doobly doo down below. Uh, but this is called in sip sip. What you do is you're going to breathe into what you think is full. You're going to take two little sips to maximize your lungs, like as full as you possibly can get them. And then you're going to push the air out really, really strong and really going to squeeze down there is the part where you can control the out, right? And then you're going to push and push two more times at the very end. So you're going to breathe in to what you think is full, sip to absolute maximum, and then you're going to push out the air really strong and then push two more times just to make sure you get every last drop of, of air out. This is a strengthening exercise called in, sip, sip, out, push, push. And I'll do it once so you can see it, and then we'll try a few together, right? So this is what it looks like. It looks like this. Okay? That's the exercise. I take a little breath in at the end. You really want to move your, move your muscles. And I'll snap my fingers to keep us in time. So let's do four of these. Let's do four. In, sip, sip, out, push, push, four times. Do it together with me. Here we go. One, two, ready, begin. Side breath. How'd that feel, huh? Did you work your muscle? Did you feel that air mushing out? Did you get every last drop out? If you didn't, give it a shot again. Try that in, sip, sip. Out, push, push. Try it again. All right? That exercise is great for expanding your strength. Now, another really good one for expanding your strength and also just really working that, that muscle and just trying to get it in there is called a power breath. Now, in a power breath, what you're going to do is you're going to try to uh, breathe in as to maximum and then squeeze it out in a certain number of counts. Now, um, normally when you're doing power breathing, you're going to do it in one count moves. You're going to breathe in, you're going to breathe out. Sometimes you can do it two for two. So what I'd like to do, and that's a way to learning how to control that strength as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do one count in, one count out four times, and then one count in, uh, two counts in, two counts out, four times. This is what it'll look like before we do it, okay? And then I'll go over that again, but this is what a power breath will look like when you breathe it in. You're gonna take a big breath in, and you're gonna squeeze it out, like this. And you're really gonna try to keep that big open whoa shape, okay? As you're breathing in, and you fill to as full as you can, and then you squeeze it as hard as you can out in one count. We're gonna do it four times, one in, one out, and then four times, two in, two out, and I'll snap my fingers to keep us in time. Here you go. One, two, ready, begin. Sigh. Now, if you're not sweating after doing that, because I know I am, you were not working hard enough. You got to try, got to go for it, got to be sweating for it. Do the best that you can. You got to sweat. You got to work. If you don't work it, it won't get better. And if you don't work harder at it, it's never going to strengthen or build. It's just the same thing with muscles. You can't just pick up the five pound weights all the time. You sometimes have to move to the 10 and then the 15. And the harder you work at it, the better you breathe. Part two is called flow studies. Now, flow studies, again, 
adapted from Breathing Gym, Patrick uh, Sheridan and Sam Palafian, link in the doobly-doo. Flow studies are what we actually use in performance. Now we haven't, now if we've been doing our strengthening exercises, if, we, if we've done our strengthening exercises, we will always be able to, uh, we will always be able to do these exercises with ease because we, we develop that, that diaphragm muscle and the flow studies are about regulating the flow. Now the hard part about flow studies is you do not want the volume of the air to change. And what I mean by that is when it starts, you want, I always describe it as a brick of air. You have this solid brick of air that moves out of your body at the same speed from full to empty. And we're not talking about maximum full or maximum empty. We're talking about 90%, 90% to 10%. So you're only moving about 80% of your normal air capacity. You're gonna go from 90% to 10%, but you want it to all move at the same speed the whole time. So you're gonna take that, you're gonna take that, you're gonna, we're gonna breathe in for a certain number of counts, and we're gonna breathe out for a certain number of counts. And the really, really important thing is that is what's called a smooth transition. You don't want to go breathe in, stop, breathe out. You want to breathe in and then immediately go back out. So you want to breathe in and out and in and out. You don't want it to ever stop. You don't want to hitch or put your glottis, which is that piece that's inside your throat that keeps you from, swallow, from uh, breathing in water or aspirating is the word that we're gonna use. Um, oh, and speaking of which, speaking of words, word number two of our three-part phrase is snack. So word number two of our three-part phrase is snack. And so while we're, while we're doing our flow study, we're going to, what we're gonna do is we're gonna breathe in for eight counts and then out for eight counts. And you don't want it to sound like this. You see, you see how like it got, it was started loud and it got softer and it did all that. What you want it to do is you want it to be the same all the way through. And a great trick that you can do is you can take your hand and you can put it up in front of your face and you can, as you're breathing in, you just kind of hold it in front of your mouth and you keep that woe shape and you go. You notice how all of my breath in was the same sound. Hopefully the microphone picked that up. It's close enough to my face, it should have, but you'll notice that as I'm breathing in those for those eight counts that the, the microphone is trying to keep that sound. Now, is it gonna be perfect every time? No, I've been doing this for a long time and I still have trouble sometimes making sure the flow is perfectly even. I am still working on it, so you're gonna be working on it forever as well. So it's, it takes, it's, it's a lifelong of practicing to get that to happen. So let's try this. We're going to take in eight counts, just take in eight counts, try to make those eight counts flow evenly the whole way in, okay? When we get done with our eight counts, we're just gonna sigh it out. Let's try eight counts in and just keep it nice and even. Here we go, eight counts in, keeping it nice and even. One, two, ready, begin. Okay, that was eight counts in, keeping it nice and even. Now I stopped at the end to try to just make sure we have that. Now what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna take a side breath in and we're gonna try eight counts out and making sure it comes out nice and even. If you do it with a nice, if you put a little bit of, uh, a little, if you, uh, even though you keep the nice woe shape, if you wanna be able to hear a little bit better, you can just blow it out. Uh, you can, you can uh, blow it out and try to keep it even for eight counts. It makes it a little bit easier to kind of hear the eight counts out. So we're gonna take a side breath in and then we're gonna try to put eight counts out. Ready, take that side breath in. Now I had to take a breath in in order to talk to you. So now we're gonna put those together. We're gonna do eight counts in and eight counts out. And we're gonna try that four times. You notice the trend, we're gonna do four times in. Eight counts in and eight counts out four times. Here we go. One, two, ready, begin.
Side breath. Very well done. You notice that I, I was putting my hand out from my face a little bit. What that is, is that's me checking to make sure my focus is good and then I'm focusing my air and I'm not just letting it kind of spread and go out. I'm keeping my air nice and focused and you wanna feel that air like in the center of your palm. I just kind of put it about, about a foot from my face and I just, as I blow out, just make sure that it's nice and centered. You saw me do it a couple times as I was going through there, but that's how you do that eight in and eight out flow study. That equates to all kinds of things. It equates to, uh, especially equates to dynamics. So now we're gonna do a couple flow studies that talk about dynamics. And what we're gonna do first is we're going to talk about uh, the idea of floating a paper airplane to be our pianissimo dynamic level. So pianissimo dynamic level, our softest, our softest dynamic level is through throwing a paper airplane. And again, um, all these exercises are straight up adapted from uh, Patrick Sheridan and Sam Palafian with the Breathing Gym. Again, the link's in the doobly-doo. If you really want to check out the real nitty-gritty of this, go ahead and check that out. But uh, we're going to do a normal side breath in, nice big whoa shape, and then we're going to float a paper airplane. Because, you know, if you throw a paper airplane too hard, what's it do? It just goes Wah! and hits the ground. Well, we don't want that to happen. So we're going to do a nice flow of air as it kind of goes out of our body and it's gonna go away from us like that. So we take a nice breath in and then we're gonna put that flow study out and then we're gonna tr really try to float that air and just really try to get that paper airplane to go as far as possible. Let's try this twice. So really get that air. That air and remember, speed of air equates to volume level and that's, that's it, speed of air. So the slowest, softest air that you can throw with that paper airplane. Let's try that twice, ready, here we go. Just breath in. Try it again. Make that paper airplane go even farther. Really get that to glide. Try to get that air. Also, while you're blowing out, try to keep that air the same speed until you feel yourself emptying out. Don't let it speed up. Don't let it slow down. Just let it try to stay the same speed. You want that paper airplane to just kind of glide away from you. All right, here we go. Paper airplane, one more time. Okay, hopefully your paper airplane glide like that. If you need to practice it a couple times, go ahead and try it. Just really take a breath in and try to get that paper airplane to glide away from you. Now, the next volume level is called dart. And if you throw a dart at a dartboard too soft, well, we all know it's not gonna make it or it's gonna dip or it's gonna stick in the wall and then your mom's gonna get mad at you. So you can't throw it too soft. And then if you throw it too hard, darts have a tendency to hit the back of the dartboard and bounce right back out again if you throw it too hard. So you need to make sure that you are not throwing that dart too hard. This is kind of our mezzo forte. It should be, the air should sound twice as loud from pianissimo, why? Because, well, you're gonna go up to mezzo forte. It's gonna be at least twice as loud, if not a little bit louder, to get there from pianissimo to piano to mezzo piano to uh, forte. So you move, you're, you're, moving, uh, you're moving twice, maybe three times as loud to get to the, the mezzo forte air volume. So when we do that, we're gonna take a breath in, we we'll do that side, same side breath in, and we're just gonna throw that dart, and you want that dart to go, and this air should last shorter than your paper airplane. If it's not, you gotta adjust your airspeed. Remember, air speed equals volume. Air speed equals volume. Here we go. Take that breath in, and then throw that dart. Imagine throwing that dart straight into the bullseye on the dartboard. <sighs> Okay, try it one more time. It was yours, did yours sound at least twice as loud as the paper airplane air? Make sure this time, here you go, breath in. Okay, hopefully yours sounded twice as loud, check your dart. Now, for the loudest setting, we're gonna go with bow and arrow. Now when you draw that bow and arrow back, it takes a lot of strength to draw it back and then you release the arrow, and when you release the arrow, it flies 
towards the target. Now, we're not worrying about the archer's paradox, you know, the whole thing with the bow wobbles, the whole thing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, Destin from Smarter Every Day, a great channel, has a uh, video on that. I'll try to link that in the doobly-doo, just so you can check that out about the archer's paradox. We're not talking about that. We're just going to pull that bow back, and we're going to fire that arrow into the target, and we're just going to put it, and remember, this needs to be twice as loud, so it's going to be at least twice as fast uh, to get fortissimo air on the bow and arrow. Big breath in, fire that bow and arrow out. Ready? Here we go. One more time. It, it's not going to last very long at all. Ready? It's all about strength. You notice I'm really trying to keep my air smooth. Let's try one more bow and arrow because that was the hardest one to keep the air from, from diminuendoing at the end. All right, here we go. Take that one more and one more and try to keep it from diminuendoing. Yeah, so you just want to get that last third one. Let's try one more time. Really go for that double forte. Really try to make sure the block of air comes out. Same speed, doesn't diminuendo, but it's still you know, twice as loud. One more time, bow and arrow. One more time. Here we go. That one was probably the best one yet. I hope you felt the same way. Yeah, those strengthening studies, I do them, the, the dynamic studies, I do them all the time on my own, um, especially the dynamics. If I realize like I'm, I'm playing or I'm singing, it just doesn't feel like I'm in the right zone volume-wise, I will always check, you know, I'll throw a paper airplane or I'll throw a dart and I'll just make sure, and I'll check my air just to make sure that that's working really nice, okay? So just uh, really, really good exercise for doing that. Now, um, the last thing I want to do uh, breathing wise is a great exercise for uh, calming your brain down. I know that a lot of times in our lives you're at sleep, you're, you're lying in bed and as you lay down your brain is like blah 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 and you're like you can't get to be quiet and you're just like oh I just want to sleep and I understand I've, I've been there in fact I was there last night. This exercise that I'm about to teach you is amazing for uh, solving that um, it really calms your brain down and it works it through there. So I'm going to teach you this really cool cal brain calming exercise you can do through breathing um, that really helps you kind of do that. It's really good for right before performance of like if you get jitters. Um, again, remember this is breathing for performance. If you get jitters or stage fright, this is a great way to try to uh, bring yourself back and, and center yourself and it's really, really good. So now I just need you to start listening to the sound of my voice and make sure you're following the instructions as I give them to you and I'm going to kind of calm it down just a little bit and uh, what I want you to really think about right now and every time you breathe out I want you to think the uh, uh, number one and every time you breathe in I want you to think a nice number two. So just follow your breath, don't try to control it. Just think one out and two in. And one out and two in. If you feel your brain drifting off somewhere else, bring it back to one out and two in. And just concentrate through that breath. So one out and two in. Again, don't try to don't try to do it at a specific speed. Just try to get that think one out. And two in. And while you're doing this right now, I want you to think. I want you to think through those ones and twos. But I want you to listen to the instructions here. We're going to do in a little bit. We're going to do an eight count breath in. Then we're going to suspend for ten. And suspend means we're not going to close anything off. We're not going to stop the air. We're not going to. If the air had a mind of its own and wanted to walk its way out of your lungs or walk its way into the lungs, it could. You're just going to leave the space open, but you're not going to let any air. You're not going to move any air. You're going to do that for 10 seconds, and then for 10 counts, and then for 12 counts, <clears throat> you're going to let that air just kind of work its way out. And so while you're listening to the sound of my voice, you're going to think about 10, you're going to So while you're thinking about that one out, and two in, I want you to listen to the following very important instructions. What we're going to do is we're going to do an eight count breath in, and then we're going to suspend for 10 counts. And when you suspend for 10 counts, you're not going to close off anything. You're just going to let the air just kind of fill in your lungs. And if it wanted to leave or walk back in, if it had a mind of its own, it would definitely be able to just kind of do that right now. So you're going to suspend the air for 10 counts, and then we're going to let it out for 12. Okay? So again, that's in for eight, 
and then you're going to suspend for 10, and then you're going to let it out for 12, and you're just going to let it flow in. Remember, still thinking, one out and two in. Just every time you breathe in, think number two. Every time you breathe out, think number one. Keep your brain all concentrating on that. And here we go. Let's try that exercise. Ready? Here we go. In for eight. One. Suspend. And out. Go back to following your breath. One out and two in. Just let if you need to visualize something, put up a big whiteboard and have a big colored number one draw as you blow out or, and a big different color number two draw as you breathe in. Think of one out and two in. I always think a blue out and a red in if I'm doing that, if I'm trying to get that color. So really think one out and two in. And let's try the eight, let's try the eight, ten, twelve one more time. Here we go. And in suspend and out. get yourself all nice and calm only takes about two or three times and then your brain will calm right down and everything will seem right and you'll be able to fall right asleep if you're having trouble if you're you, you stage fright it'll calm you down and everything will be much better and still following that breath one out and two in it's been my pleasure working with breathing with you today i hope it has helped your performance this ends episode one see you bye